All right, today's project is to install our light board in this uh, car. This is a, a rail fan car. It's beautiful, really, it's a nice car. So anyway, we took it apart, um, sort of, we're gonna put one of our two light boards in. Uh, here's our standard board with the LEDs down the center, and here's our dual row board. And um, so, <laughs> First glance at the car, as you can tell, this is a sleeper. And if we were to put the lights down the middle, they'd end up in this center cavity. Uh, this part would be lit, but this end of the car wouldn't be lit. So if you look at this alignment of our dual row board, you can see that it'll shine in uh, some of the rooms, not all of them. And uh, if you want to cut down the little partitions between the rooms, you can get actually get some more light. Um, so anyway, the first thing that we do uh, is we just put the board uh, loosely inside and there's always some kind of uh, a, alignment pieces inside, snaps or something. And this board's 11 and a and, uh, half millimeters wide and uh, pretty much, whoops, let's do it. Let's just do it like this and just sort of drop it in. There we go. And it just fits inside. The next step before we do anything is to put the car back together in a way and make sure that there's enough clearance. And we came very close, but not quite. And the reason the not quite part is that we have a few parts, uh, the capacitors and the CPU and the regulator that stick up a little bit. So what we're going to do is align the car like this and then take our file and file a mark down approximately uh, here to flatten this section out. Um, we used to use a grinder, but it just doesn't work as well. So we're gonna do some filing here uh, down about a millimeter. And I'm gonna use this wall. I'm gonna keep this wall and I'm gonna file this partition down about the width of the file. It should be enough. Now there's other uh, kinds of files that we're going to use. Uh, women's nail file uh, is great. This is a fine tooth one and what we're going to do is once we get down a little bit we're going to go and file this down so it's nice and smooth and even. And we'll do that here. Uh, we'll do it over the CPU just a little bit and also over the regulator and that should give us a clean uh, install. Uh, some of these cars, this is one where the roof snaps off and uh, that's pushing this this platform where we would uh, where we have to put the board is a little bit proud of the, the ceiling. We usually we can double stick this to the ceiling. Uh, in this car, we don't have that option. We'll probably use double stick tape in the middle to hold it there, uh, but we can't push it further. So that's about a millimeter's worth of plastic that's pushing the board down in and giving us a, a little bit more work to do on the car. All right, we filed the inside uh, part. I'll show you that in a second, but I had to take the roof off to make this fit. And what I noticed is that the tabs that hold the roof on, when they go in, this is smaller than 11 and a half millimeters. So let's see exactly how that spacing is. Uh, I never actually had to do one this like this. So it's little bit smaller, it's about 10 and a half. So um, we're gonna take a look at the board. And so the board has places where we can carve into the board and fit in so that the, the roof slots will go back in. So a little bit more work on this car. Uh, it's amazing, we've done hundreds of these uh, installs, um, different manufacturers, and we always come across some kind of funny thing like this. So uh, we're pretty comfortable with how the inside set up sands the roof and I don't want to I don't want to cut these tabs uh, so we're going to see if we can cut the board. All right uh, we ended up we're still working on this but uh, so you can see from the side that we have space for the capacitors and the top of the seat came up to the top of this and it's right where the LEDs are so what we've been doing is going along and just trimming the top of the seats where the LEDs are so we can get some light from one side to the other. Uh, I haven't done this one yet. You can see where the, the top of the seat 
hits the LED and we want the light to spill on both sides. So the way to do this is to take, just I have a regular box knife. I like the, the, the hold, you can use an X-Acto. And I'm gonna just very gently slice to separate this part from this part. Let's see if I can get my thumb, thumb out of the way. And then at an angle, because I don't wanna cut this part over here, I'm just gonna shave and just, this is pretty soft stuff. And I just shave off a little bit of the top of the seat and I try to make it level. I'm about 12 inches away because the camera's in the way, but you can get the idea. Just shave that, that spot right there. And now uh, there, there's room, let's get it over here. There's enough light that uh, there's a space between the, the top of the seat and the LED, and so now the light can shine into both of these rooms. And we'll do the same thing over here, although we have a long hallway, and we have this spot on this room that we'll have to do, and we'll probably do something down here. All right, well, this turned out uh, in one way to be our most challenging project. It's a, uh, it's got the roof tabs that I told you about a second ago, and uh, it, we have the double row board because it's a sleeper. So we've got a combination of challenges. And what I did very carefully is I filed notches along the board uh, half a millimeter in, um, in some cases a little bit more than half a millimeter. So that's the spacing you have before you get into the traces. And I put them exactly where the tabs are. I don't know if you can see that. See that the notches on that end notch on that end, on that end, and just filed it down very carefully using a flat nail, flat uh, file like this, just very gently. I mean, just, just take your time. And uh, so the good news is that when we dropped it in here, it just fit like a glove right between the little red tabs that are holding the roof together. So now this is flush, it fits in with the tabs, we trimmed the car, it doesn't look, you can hardly tell, and you certainly won't be able to tell because uh, the top of this part is above the window line inside the car. So we're gonna just uh, test fit this. I did this a minute ago, and the, the wonderful thing is when it snaps like that, you know it's set. So it's all flush and we're ready to go with the electronics. Now this already has some wheel pickups, and uh, we're going to tap into them uh, in just a second. I'll show you though. But anyway, that's the that's the work to get the board to fit. All right, this car is going to be fantastic, but it is going to give it. It has been giving us some challenges. One more is the good news is that it's already got wheel pickups. These are uh, little tabs that go up inside. Both sides are insulated. We're not going to use the floating brass in this case. Uh, because there's already a pickup. And here in the back of the car are where the uh, connectors are for another lighting system that uh, I don't even know if these folks make it. But anyway, we've got already got that part taken care of. The problem is this nickel silver uh, and this thing is just impossible to solder. And uh, we've played with this a few different ways. And so we are actually going to use our floating brass strips to connect to the existing uh, pickups, and then we're gonna solder to the brass, and that'll make things easy. And to make all of that work, we're gonna use something called copper tape. And it's very thin, and it's uh, it's conductive, and we're going to fasten the brass strip to here. Now, there's, there's no mechanical, um, you know, there's no tension or anything on this. It just has to hold the two pieces together. It's very sticky and very conductive and it'll work perfectly. And, and the one millimeter strip will fit right there and we'll just bend it around. All right, so uh, a couple of things here. Um, on the brass strips, the middle strips are exactly one millimeter. The outside ones are a little bit wider than one millimeter, so I've cut them uh, both off so you can uh, see right here they're a little bit different in size and I matched them up with the 
uh, back of this, this is how we're going to fasten them. And the one millimeter standard strips fit perfectly, you know, they're aligned. If I make the, this bigger one, you seem like more contact, but I've got to wrap the copper around the two po sides of this post, and I want it to be a, a smooth corner connection, so that'll help keep it uh, together. It's going to be really small and tiny while I'm doing that. So basically what I'm going to do is cut a piece of tape this this height. I'm going to fasten this here uh, and then wrap the tape around that piece and then we'll eventually cut the copper strip. I'll put this on both sides. So I'll show you what that looks like uh, at, when I'm finished. All right. Well, I'm back and I thought I would be finished at this point, but when I got to attaching the copper tape, this is the connector that was already in there. And you can see there's maybe two millimeters worth of wire that's stuck inside here to connect. Along the bottom, there are two uh, metal plates. They're separated, so for one rail and the other rail. And uh, just that whole thing fell apart and no good. So in order to get underneath this, you have to take off the trucks on both sides. It turns out I think this thing is glued. I, didn't, I don't need to pull the whole thing off and, and go to that effort. So what I did is I just separated this uh, black lower part and I put a piece of copper. Uh, I basically made a flag out of the copper tape and I faced this down. So this is gonna touch the metal in there. And you see how much contact now I'm gonna have uh, to the metal here rather than two millimeters. So I'm just gonna uh, pick this up and slide this in. And then here's where the metal came up before. I'm just gonna bend this copper around and I'm gonna be done. So that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be a much better way to go. I'm glad I found that. Uh, there's all sorts of glue and stuff in here. They tried to glue this thing in. Uh, I think that's the weak link in this whole set. Nice car, everything else is, looks great. That's no good, so we're gonna fix that. All right, I managed to get those two uh, little kites, if you will. Uh, I had to trim it, uh, the copper on one side so that the rails would line up with the two um, tracks, I guess I'd call them. And all I'm gonna do is bend this up and around just like the other one was. And I'm gonna bend it down a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, and now we have copper pickups connected firmly. I just snapped this in, which pressed the uh, copper tape onto the metal. And again, trying to, trying to, all you need is, is a good uh, surface area contact. Uh, you don't have to solder that. Uh, we've had a lot of great success with this. Now I have uh, the copper tabs that I can solder the board connection wires to it. That's going to be fairly simple. Um, don't solder them while they're bent around here. What we're going to do is we just bent them to get the right form. Uh, and then I'm going to, uh, it's fairly soft. Uh, we, we did a lot of work to find the right kind of copper that would be uh, hold its shape, uh, but still allow us to bend it and, uh, and work with it. I don't want to solder here because I'm going to melt the plastic. So I'll unwrap that and solder that piece on. Uh, but we're, uh, we're, Getting pretty close. Okay, I've tinned the end of the copper on both of these things. Uh, just lightly touched it and then just a very teeny dab of solder. I've tinned the wire and my left hand is the one that shakes a little bit. I'm a foot away reaching out, so I apologize for that, but you can see Even if that's the case, even I can do it. All right, whoops. <laughs> Let's get this other wire here. Uh, it's really hard to see what I'm doing. Let's bend it out a little bit more. Can you see that? Okay. And I'll just come under here. And there we have two good clean connections. And now I'll show you where we'll feed the wire in just a second. Okay, I just tested the board and uh, it works. I just connected some alligator clips here to my DCC system. Um, by default, we cover this uh, little dot here with solder as well as in the back for the red LED. 
we're in the installation now we're ready to go so we're going to remove this little uh, dot of solder and there are two ways to do that uh, clean off your uh, soldering tool and I don't know if you're familiar with this but this is like a little Brillo pad thing and when you stick the solder iron in it it just gets all the solder off and the reason is that then we will just wick off the solder and more solder will end up in the iron and now you see you see two dots and that removed uh, the solder from there and we're going to do the same thing we're going to clean off the solder iron and then we're going to just do this little dot down here because we don't need the red light and just flick it and there we go so there and there good good and clean okay we're progressing along I soldered uh, as you saw the two wires in this case uh, the connection for the DC is down at this end it's a long story about how where we put the capacitors which part of the car uh, but the advantage is that I can lift this board and pivot it uh, sometimes uh, it's a little bit tricky. So anyway, I'm using Kapton tape. This stuff is amazing. Uh, it's usually used for, you know, can be used for electrical installation. It has a silicone glue. It has a temperature rating over up to 260 degrees centigrade. We use this uh, when we're uh, working on uh, building PC boards and so forth. Uh, but what I did is I just took a piece of it uh, and it's a little bit loose, rub it against the edge of the board and then I have one knife which I keep very sharp open it up to the end and that's it uh, get off of there okay so I just use this it got stuck on the, the the little slot that we had cut before so there we go we just cut trim that off and we're going to just solder to the other other side of this in just a second. Okay, I soldered the wires uh, to the two DCC ends. I just wrapped them over the end and then I flipped them facing backwards. Uh, so that creates a little bit of a, a nice wire management. So the wires are going back and then coming back and connecting to the two tabs. So this whole assembly, well, let me back up. So you can see what's going on. There we go. This whole assembly now uh, just flips over and we're going to just adjust, make sure these tabs are in the right place. We are going, the next step is to get our car out and hopefully all the spacing will work. And there we go. And now let's get the test track out and try it out. Okay, there's the car. It's pretty cool. The Texas Special. And uh, we're going to put it on the track here. And uh, it took a lot longer, a little more complicated than we thought. It took me 10 minutes to put the coupler back on. The little coupler at the end fell off. That's, and uh, that wasn't much fun. But there it is. Okay. So let's put it on. Uh, fade up and on, fade off, pretty cool. Let's turn it around. So this is a sleeper car, right? So uh, if you'd used anybody else's product, almost anybody else's product with the lights down the center, it would not have come out this nicely with lighting in the hallway. That's the hardest part. And then lighting in, in the back room here. So uh, we're pretty happy with that. And um, so we we're going to set it up so that uh, the capacitors are all fired up and ready to go. And uh, there it is.